Alright, yeah, Maxi, what's the plan? We building ourselves a guitar amp because we're cheap. Alright, what are we using? Oh, we're using our old computer speaker that we get for free because we're also cheap. Right. Now, why we can't just connect this computer speaker right up to the guitar? Because you won't get no sound because the voltage on the guitar is low. Right, so the pickups is produced too low a voltage, so what we need is a preamp. Right, which is this. This thing I'm a jiggy. Right, and this is a what? This is a preamp. Operational amplifier, oh. LM386. Right. Basic. Why we didn't build one of these? Because we're cheap. Because this is real cheap. This is a dollar right. fifteen cents. It will take us probably two hours to build this and put this on a board on a tip. So, you know, dollar fifteen US. Now with it. So we're gonna use this. What we need to make this work now? D -d 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 input and the output. Input, output, and power. Power. Right. So how much? What voltage this works with? One, no, nine, eight, three to eighteen. Three to eighteen volts. DC. Yeah, DC. What we have coming into our amp? One twenty. Right. Volts AC. Right. So how are we getting our voltage now? We have to steal some volts. We have to steal it from this thing here, this board. We have to steal it from okay. here. Okay, first we need to describe. This is a? Transformer. Right, let's take any 120 volts and turn it to? 9 volts. Right, so but this is 9 volts AC. Right. So we can't use this yet. Okay. So this board now has what we have here. It's a bridge rectifier, right? And a capacitor for smoothing. And somewhere right after there, it will have 9 volts DC. Right. So we're going to find our 9 volts. And we're going to steal it. We're going to steal our 9 volts. Because we steal it. Right. And we're going to bring it and put that inside here for our 9 volts and input this thingy. into this thing. Right. Now this is a 0 to 200 amplifier. So it's up to 200 times it's going to amplify the signal. And this here, this is a variable resistor. So we'll adjust this before we put this inside here and leave it inside and that will give us our voltage amplification so we won't get distortion right right so everything he just said what we're gonna do we're gonna plug this in plug in our 120 try not to get shock don't, don't get shock and what we're gonna do is find where we get in our dc9 volts and we're gonna chief it again because we're steves all right good beep all right so what's right here we are on volts DC, right? Mm. Don't that far. Right. And that's as many volts as running. So, what we have worked out is that, think, this here is the positive and that's the negative, right? Yep. So, we'll touch it. Watch your meter. Put on the meter, what are we getting? We're getting 13.8. Yeah, which is a bit higher than the nameplate says, but it's still within what our um, preamp will take. So, we are 13.8, right? We know it's positive and we know this is negative. So we're gonna mark this, and then we're gonna get our wires and sort up, right? Cool. Okay. Let's test them back. And uh, what we get in there? Thirteen point nine three, right? Yep. Okay. What we're gonna do is put it on and see what we're really getting on the load. And what we get now? Eleven point seven. Right. So you notice something there, right? A drop. Mm -hmm. That's because we put it on load, we put it on the device. So we're working with 11.7, which is perfectly good even if this is a 12 volt one. Excellent. Alright, check out the wire 10, right? Yep. Okay, can that properly? Kinda, just uh, making sure. Right. All right, let me check it. Quickly removing this connector here and trying to push the wire in. This is the connection that comes in here that goes onto the board there. The thing is, it's a really long wire and it shows up back on the controller. But we want to stick this controller somewhere right at here so that we can basically have the on off right here and the volume control right at the amp. So this needs to come out. The extended wire needs to go in. See, describe what we're gonna do. We taking out this input here and we connecting it to wait a minute. 
this one here and this is the output but we're making it an input and to do that we have to disconnect the output and we have to make sure no output signals coming out of here and we leave in the headphone jack here we connect in this output once it connects here connecting this to this speaker right so we know what we're gonna do this is gonna take us about probably 45 minutes so let's get cracking the plug in the jack and testing the jack has a red a white and a copper color so this is where the copper goes which is the um, base to brown so that's expected um, that turned out to be the white this turned out to be the red so what I'm going to do is separate those copper traces so here here and here straight across just cut them with a dremel um, so that allows us to then take and jump in here as the input and carry that back to the next board then the other side will be the output speaker that we're going to use it's okay, so where we are so Mexi okay so basically we turn the output into the input by cutting it so I strip these wires to connect it to this and then I strip these two wires because this was too long and it would just be too much to push in there so when we put this into this hole this one here this hole here then I will connect it back through here by sorting it together we drill he drill the hole here and position it here so this is where all right and how we come. secure any wire here you know no how uh let's find the little connector where they go this ah yes all right so this is the little connector so just push the wire through and then we clip that that's the connections of things so now we're gonna run some tape and the shrink in here heat it up so that will be the Reduce wire length. Uh, we still have to do the next piece, which is connect our input into this module actually, and then take this and carry it to the next one. Taped up, we're gonna slip this over the sleeve and then run some heat on it. Let's see how that goes. Well, bit of a dodgy little piece of trunk in here to put on this board to attach a small board. There's really nothing really available to attach a small board. So what we're gonna do is, as I said, really dodgy, put some hot glue here, stick this board on, and then make the jumper connections. Um, and then we'll just cover over this so it doesn't have any um, sharp protruding edges and it's a little bit stronger. This is the extent of our dodgy gluing. That board on there, putting some blobs over the uh, screws so they don't protrude or stick anything and then a full glue on the long length of this so we'll see how that goes now it's a matter of checking out this to the proper connector and then making the connections so doing some soldering so the first one's already finished and uh, Maxi is now running the connection from the guitar input to our preamp which is the LM386 board that we discussed before unfortunately we are using the what that is the um power connector off of our power supply from our computer to do the jump burn because i'm not finding any other four connectors and unfortunately it still know that red is our negative in that arrangement when it lines up and black is our positive for this one and the last one we've got yellow as positive yeah. and black as negative which isn't too bad what we do yesterday, we make this cord longer by joining these two, as you can see here. Alright, All right, first you need to describe where we got this cord from. That? That was the extension cord from right, this device. Right, This was the extension cord from this device. That we, we cut out. That we cut off and we join it in this one to make it longer so we won't have to be so close right, so to the back to jacks. And the reason for this is, this is a this mini headphone jack. And this is the correct jack for uh, yeah. guitar, so yeah, we had to make that join up. Right. This is a plan that we make so we we'll know where we have to cut and what is where inside of the amp. Because we wanted to put a new speaker, so we needed to know where everything was going so we could put the new speaker. Right, so the port, that's the port there. The board, that's this board that fits in the back here. The controller, the little wire, there's a transformer inside here to power it, and the speaker here, which is the bottom speaker that's in there. So we decide we have enough space in the front, now we just pick our position, center it, mark it up, and cut the hole. Cutting a hole with that kind of shape, 
have to cut out the center first and then try to get the edges because I'm not getting the corners to make a nice neat cut. Some neaten up to do, edges here not the greatest, uh, that's what happens with jigsaw cut in left hand here actually. And then they had some braces going in here and those had to be knocked out so those are those little pieces there. Fortunately they chose to use uh, hot glue, yes yeah, so it's cut out the top so that didn't too bad. So let me neaten these out and see if I can get a speaker in. It's slightly, it's close to not fitting perfectly. We were very very fortunate, the edge here was just under, it was about six and a half millimeters and this is about six so we just have a little bit extra here, a little bit more on this side so maybe a little more to come up here but we'll get to that and see if we can get this thing in. After many 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 hours, alright maybe not many hours but quite a while, it's finished out, it's not perfectly symmetrical but it yeah, just are neat, it looks okay and the speaker fits in interference so it's not too bad we'll have to paint it we was going to put a grill but there isn't any space on the edges to do that so it's going to be a bit of a problem time to drill the four holes for the bolts uh paint a black speaker sort on some wires and mount it and the home stretch final assembly we need to what's not this down put this across put the clamp in there and put that in all right <laughs> then we need to put in the board I right, just this board in. We need to make the final link on these wires going in and basically um, join up this speaker. So that has the patine, that has the screw up. We have the screws here for that. All these rest of things just plug in. So it's really once that's finished, we go ahead. I'm gonna put some hot stuff in these spots just to keep the wires from pulling okay. out. And uh, we just have to avoid the super small components. So it's a process along the way. We'll take some shots, but not the whole video. It'll be too long. Bye. This one. Yeah, it's not now. Unlikely that one's coming out. Right. You get a bit in. Camera. We've managed to put some hot glue on the little spots to keep the wires from pulling off. We need to put a normal wire in and put a little bit of hot glue there. Uh, we've put in this crimp and plug that one in. Let's bend this in and stick it. The glue came out a little bit, but eh, close enough. So we have a nice neat run. Now we need to just finish that, put that inside here, and then push the speaker through, and then continue now with the screwing up. Final shots before we close up. Hot's not here. Oh, it's not here to keep this wire from coming out. It wasn't the best connection, but it should work. Um, so, all the glue all over. And the challenge now is that I need to keep this plugged in. And I also need to keep, well, this has to be tied in. So, all these wires, I need to fit in everything else. So, let me see if we could push it in and see how far we can get with this. There's four screws going in. So, I'm actually finishing up. That's the bottom speaker. That's the base speaker. And we put in a well mid speaker on the side, so there really isn't any much heights, but mm, that work. First run on it. Let's try. The loudest setting will be this. Um, yeah, the middle. Yeah, that's loudest. Yeah. Well, that's loud. I could raise this here. Alright, yeah, go ahead. That's the loudest now. The loudest, loudest. Yeah. Yep, distortion. So, yep. definitely, we're getting distortion. Go ahead. Try it. Right, yeah. so we are actually within range, right? And you can reduce your volume there a little bit now. To suit you. Middle, middle is good. Alright. Yeah, we feel that. Can't help these opens, that's just how the speaker is made. And the things, what we should have done is paint this, you know. Forgot to paint this. The black, when we had it open. But then the speaker actually shows here too, so it would have helped too much. Right, and then the bass speaker, let's see, no idea, go ahead. Yeah, everything's working. And if we raise the bass up, 
Let's go maximum bass. Any louder than that, you'll annoy everybody in the whole neighborhood. Yep. A final look at everything. This original Logitech box, as you could tell. Speaker cut out, and as I said, we didn't put any paint here or anything we should have. But either way, you would have seen the side of the speaker. The grill is a little difficult to put in because this is exactly to the front, exactly to the end here, exactly to the end there. So we had no space to work with to put a grill. But we may end up in a grill, or we may end up in a handle. Right? Next side, nothing much here. And this is the back. This is where all the fun occurs. What we did is we brought the controller right up to here, stuck it on hot glue. We have our headphones, we have our on and off here, so we can take it off and on, right? Uh, this is the input, which was the output originally, and we changed that to an input, so like a normal thing. Nicely routed, not perfectly squared. And yeah, we put in an additional speaker, put in an amplifier, and made it all work. So Maxi, final thoughts? Oh yeah, come on, good, we had fun. Right. You're gonna post it and you're gonna show everybody how to do this. Okay.